Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well. And in this video, I'm just going to go back to the testing of the earth leakage clamps that I covered in a previous video. Now in that video, I used a secondary current injection test set or skits as we call them. And I appreciate that not everybody would have such an advanced piece of test kit. So in this video, I'm going to look at a couple of methods that are much cheaper and much easier for people to obtain and use to carry out some basic tests on this kind of instrument. So what I have here is the UTG962 uh, waveform generator. That's from UniT. It's available in the UK for around about £110. So this one is a 60 megahertz output. They also do a, I think it's a 932 unit that has a 30 megahertz output. Uh, and that will be a little bit cheaper than this one. So at the moment, the output is set up to 50 hertz. I don't know how well I can get this on the screen, hopefully. Let me glare on it. Um, it's 50 hertz. I've got just over one volt output. Uh, I'll just correct that. Uh, so that'll be one volt RMS. That's with me playing around. Now these units are designed to work with a 50 ohm load, as you can see on the front of the screen there uh, when I held it up. So I've got here a decade resistance box that I've set to 50 ohms. Uh, you could use a standard 50 ohm resistor if you have one. Uh, I'm just using this whilst I play around a little bit. Um, and that decade box is just wired in series with the output of this. And then I have my current clamp going around one of the wires uh, through the load. So you turn the output on and 1 volt RMS with a 50 ohm load in it should give me about 20 milliamps and you can see hopefully there if I hold him up I've got that glare on it 20.49 milliamps going through that there I can change the output of this to 0.5 volts and that should give me 10 milliamps and there we've got 10.22 milliamps there uh, so that works reasonably well now the downside to this is these units will have a limitation to their output um, if I just go 5 uh, volts RMS it will come back with this area here to say sorry you're out of range doesn't like that and it will give me the maximum that I have which is 3.536 volts RMS uh, and into my 50 ohm load that gives me 72.3 milliamps uh, output uh, so we'll take him back to uh, 0.5 volts RMS so that's the limitation with this kind of output however uh, you quite easily saw 10 to 70 milliamps there I can quite easily test the 1 to 30 milliamp range where these clamps are normally used um, because predominantly in the UK they're used to check electrical circuits protected by RCBOs or RCDs to see what the leakage is on them if you've got faults on them or you're doing some maintenance work and or some upgrade work. So this method will quite happily test it throughout that range. If I do want to increase the output range from this a couple of ways I can do it. The first way is to loop the wire multiple times through the head of the clamp. Um, and I've got here just five turns on this coil of wire here so I can uh, just take him into circuit and pop him in there. Pop him in there. You can remember it was 10 milliamps I had beforehand, which you can plug into the right hole. So there's the reading that I've got there 10.19 milliamps with a single loop. Take them out, put them through the five wires. We should be expecting somewhere around about 50 milliamps. And you can see there I've got 50.87. So that's the easiest way to get the output, uh, and you can. You can put pretty much whatever number of terms you like in there. Um, the other way of creating a higher output current is to use an amplifier. 
So this is an example of an amplifier here. It's one that I built up myself, but you can buy similar sorts of items as well if you don't want to build one up. Uh, and all I would do would be to use the output of this to drive the input to this. And I've got uh, capability up to two amps uh, out of these jacks here. Uh, and even with, when using this, you would have the option of creating multiple turns to further increase this. So a five turn coil at two amps would give me 10 amps out that I could also use to measure. And obviously this methodology that I've just used kind of relies upon me believing that the output on this is accurate, as is this 50 ohm resistor. So if you wanted to carry out some checks whilst you were doing this, you could put a current ammeter in circuit here, which we'll try with the KM601 here that we've also been playing around with. And now the problem with this is that what's going to happen is um, the shunt on this meter is going to give me an increase in the resistance of the circuit. So that's the advantage of using a decade box here and that I will be able to adjust this to take into consideration the resistance of this circuit within this ammeter here, um, which I know I need to set this to 43.24 ohms, and that should give me back to 50 ohms circuit load. So let's just connect him up in series, which is this one here. Uh, so you'll go in there, and you'll go in there, and you'll go in there. And we need to send to AC. So you can see, um, smack on 50 hertz, and we've got 9.952 showing on the KM601 here, 10.19. And then let's take him up to our uh, 1 volt RMS, and we got to... 20.41 and 19.91 there and let's go to 1.5 volts and that's done my 10 20 30 milliamp 30.6 29.87 on there um, specifications wise this does actually have one percent tolerance the same as this instrument does if i remember correctly so in an ideal world you'd use a bit better instrument than this with a higher tolerance on it at least three times, preferably up to ten times better tolerance than the clamp you're trying to test, and you could use that as a calibration setup. But um, this one here looks much better in videos than that one does, so I'll, I'll continue to use that. Okay, so yeah, that's a, a little demonstration there of that working. Um, we'll just turn him back down to 0.5, so we're on, back on 10 milliamps. What I did notice whilst I was playing around with this is that you can actually um, put an offset onto this instrument. Um, so I hope you can read 10.21. So I can offset the waveform at the moment. It's uh, acting like a, a genuine AC waveform uh, alternating around zero volts. If I go to the offset, uh, that one there, and uh, I changed it now so that my waveform is completely above the zero volt line, but I'm still reading 10.20 milliamps. Now that's quite handy because that means that I can use a single rail function generator or amplifier as opposed to the dual rail one that I built up there, which makes life a little bit easier. So I'll just uh, take this out of circuit um, and put in another unit to have a play with that and show you an even cheaper way of testing these current clamps out. So just bear with me. Okay, so you can actually read back with 10.51 milliamps, 10.52 milliamps on there. We are actually at, um, nearly one kilohertz. Uh, so what we can do with our little friend here is turn back down the frequency if I get my hand out of the way. Mm. 
So we're on 60 hertz there. Don't know how close. This is a, um, a digital unit through a pick. Uh, 25, that's not going to work, is it? Uh, 51 hertz there. Uh, so these are available. This particular unit I've got here is an old Maplins one. Um, there was a kit that you can build up. Uh, you can get these from Amazon, similar sorts of units for somewhere around about £10 usually. Um, and as you can see here, I've got 9.76 here. And I've got 10.01. See, it's perhaps not quite as stable as a true function generator, but you know, it's, that's the difference between the costs, I guess. Uh, but again, I can tweak this up. Uh, this has got a built in volume control. You can compare them there. I've got 21.6 milliamps there, 21.07, 20.05. So you can get up to 30 milliamps on this one as well. So yeah, there you go, 30 milliamps there, 29.3 on Kai Wheats. So that's a, a much, much cheaper way of doing it. Again, you could use that to power an amplifier. As this is a single rail power supply unit, you can get a cheap mono amplifier and you can boost the output current that way. And again, you can also use uh, the trick with the multi-turn coil, um, going back in the circuit quickly. Uh, it's not going to work there, is it? Let's uh, move through there. And throw the wire back in. So we've got five turns again. Again, 30 milliamps on the meter there hasn't changed in my there. Uh, went out to 150 milliamps reading on there. You can see that 150.2 milliamps, 29.34 going in. So there you have it. There's a couple of much cheaper ways to test the measurement capabilities of a earth leakage clamp meter, either with a commercial function generator, which I guess this is probably one of the cheapest ones out there, amplifier if you want it, or multiple turn coils, or you could go and buy yourself a small function generator off the likes of Amazon uh, for around about a tenner. You just need to play about with it to see what the output capabilities are and then build coils up to give you different currents, couple it with a good ammeter, and you can make some uh, fairly accurate measurements. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, hope you found it useful, and I'll see you again in the next one.